I've never experienced rage as strongly or as frequently as I have over the past year or so. I'm very well acquainted with the other classics, heartbreak, failure, grief, despairing hopelessness, unrequited love, and the overwhelming freedom of youth and responsibility to contribute and make a better world for our future, but with no drive or sense of ambition with which to use this power. I'm not an angry person. I don't tend to be resentful or unimpressed or impatient. I've always had a fairly high tolerance for nagging or things going wrong, but instead of getting angry, I generally get disappointed and a little sad. But I'd keep it to myself and just sit in the poopy feelings for a bit. Not so much anymore, though. And I think I can pinpoint it to my job. I'm a barista, probably one of the smilier and chattier baristas you'll meet, and it's not a put-on. My typical persona when it comes to public interaction is cheerful, upbeat, and welcoming. That's how I like it, and that's my natural state of being. It takes a lot of effort for me to welcome someone miserably. I've tried. It's weird. And despite having struggled with ongoing anxiety and depression, and ferocious self-esteem issues for most of my life, I think people would say I'm quite an upbeat and easygoing person. But there's a new version of myself that I've met recently who is so alien to me and is challenging my understanding of my own personality. And that's rage. I've started slamming drawers, throwing cutlery into the sink, cursing with all the colors of the rainbow, and I've developed a face, a rage face. My coworkers have seen it, and they know when they see it to just give me space and let me deal with my business on my own. I don't even recognize myself. It's very likely to be a combination of a few things. General stress, fatigue, lack of patience, persistent stressors, and the occasional surprise bombs. General stress is always there. The stress of being a young adult trying to get by in the world. Also the general stress of working in a very busy, very fast paced, famous name coffee shop amid machinery noises, intense smells, hot steam, boiling water, hot coffee, rowdy public, Detailed minutia of specific orders, occasionally shouted out very loudly, very quickly, and then repeated for clarity, and met with groans of impatience or correction, laying on the guilt and feelings of incompetence and insufficiency. It's just coffee. Fatigue comes from waking up at 3.30 to get to work for 4.30 to open the store for 5 a.m. Eight hours of the above later, and body and soul have simply had enough. But caffeine has been absorbed through the pores in the skin and sleep is impossible. And it's only lunchtime. No, I can't fall asleep when the clock tells me it's only 9 or 10 p.m. I can't. It doesn't work. And I've tried the napping thing. It's a scam. Once upon a time, it felt like we had all the time in the world. Summer vacation seemed to last for years and graduation was so far away. Nowadays you blink and you've missed the entirety of January. I think my body knows that time is moving faster, and it seems that I've lost the patience I once had for making mistakes and trying again, or for people to contemplate and decide their order, or the patience to wait until payday comes around, or for my hair to grow. Some persistent stressors are nags and reminders, things I already know but are still shouted at me day after day, again implying that I'm incompetent and haven't learned a damn thing because I'm useless. Then there are the surprise bombs. These are the things that, on top of everything that I've mentioned, just make me snap. I used to be told by an unsympathetic soul when I was already in some teary state of despair, well, don't cry about it. Thanks. That, uh, that really helps my situation. So what does help? Well, I'm still kind of figuring that out. See, this rage stuff is still very new to me and I haven't figured out a surefire way of bringing myself back down to earth. But I am trying some things. One, quiet. Let out a few initial swear words, but then shh. There's no need to elaborate. Nothing more needs to be said right now, so just shh. And let your head process what just happened. You can listen and hear better, see more clearly, and feel if there's a piece of broken glass underneath your foot. Two, distance. If it's possible, leave the room. The very process of crossing a threshold has this weird effect on our brain and our memory in which we sort of reset when we enter another room. It's often called the doorway effect, 
and it's what happens when we walk into another room and forget what we went in there for. I live in a one-room apartment, so I'll usually either step into the bathroom where I can close the door, or I'll go outside onto the balcony and breathe for a minute. Which brings me to number three, breathing. You hear it everywhere, it's a yoga thing, but it's good. Breathe. Don't forget to breathe. Concentrate on how you're breathing, get that air in, and slowly, slowly let it out. Calm that heart rate. It's not going to do you any good racing like that. Four, hydrate. Have a sip of water. Make your tense face muscles do something else. This is a thing I also do if I'm in misery and I can't stop crying. Forcing your mouth and jaw to do something other than sobbing is a really great way to just break out of it. And five, I need music. Music travels with my emotions, and sometimes I just need some Laura Marling or, or some gentle acoustic or soft solo piano to set me right again. And that's my shtick. It's still a weird and new emotion for me, so I'm still kind of figuring it out. Maybe a change of scenery will do me some good. Maybe more sleep. Or maybe I need a new job. Probably. And that's my news. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you like, give me a thumbs up. If you've been feeling some rage yourself lately, let it out and smash that thumbs up button or the subscribe button, whatever you like. If you'd like to see more of me, definitely do hit subscribe because they've got a whole lot more stuff in store and I would love to take you all with me. In the meantime, be extra good to yourselves. Stay groovy and I'll see you in the next one.